All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. This is a 580 stroker, and it's finally time to build it. This is the Bulldog block, if you missed the other 10 videos on it or whatever. So that means cross bolts and mains, side mini cylinders. I've got my cam bearings in, the cam's stuck in right now. My goal for the day is to get the crank dropped in. I've already measured my rod and main clearances, and try to get the bottom in assembled. My other goal, I don't know if I'll do it today or not, but I need to very soon, measure for push rods. The push rods that were in this, I don't think were correct, and they had some damage done to them, so they've got to be replaced. Otherwise, should be smooth sailing. It is a little bit of a different process versus a plain old 440 build or a 318 or whatever with the aftermarket stuff, so everything's got to fit in its own little home. And that's what we're trying to do. Well, here's all our main bearings in. And you'll notice some of them have little tiny scratch marks on them. That was where I dropped my dial indicator in to check those bearing clearances. So that's all looking really nice. Uh, got a rear main seal for Mancini. So he had the uh, holder for Mancini before. I just got online and ordered a new seal kit. And it comes with a little side seal, so I can show you how that sets up. I got to get the other one cleaned up really well. Uh, but basically it takes the, I think that's a Felpro Viton. So it even says Felpro on there. But there it is, if you need that one, or their old stuff. Here's the seal retainer. And kind of a double layer of stuff there. You tuck your little ends in the holes and you pull it over. Then you can trim off the excess on top. But like I said, that one's... We're still dirty right now, so I'll get her cleaned up. Also, I can go ahead and drop my bottom half to seal in the block. Since I'm about point of view, see the holes? See the holes? And these are like squared off seals. You can start anywhere you want to, stab them in, and then fold it as to where the square peg meets the square hole. Or the slot, I'm sure somebody will want to correct me on that. Anyway. And there it is. And you just do all four. And I'm not gonna cut mine off until I get them put in the engine because I don't wanna to come too short. There we go. You don't have to wear black gloves. I just wore them because I'm about to be touching a lot of ARP lube and I don't like it all over my hands all the time. Looks nice, just like that. I'll do the other side. Drop our seal in, brand new seal. That's the front of the engine. And there we are. I don't have to put anything behind the seal. It does stick out of the cap just slightly on both sides. If you can see that. We're not offsetting the seal or any of that crazy madness. This is exactly what was in this engine, exactly the way it was, and we're going exactly back like that. I'll put a dab of seal it on each corner when it goes in and we should be good to go. Also lubing the outside of the seal, but you see the lip facing forward so the oil will blow into it and not get out of the engine. So all that looks nice. Be sure you have clearance. It looks like maybe someone has ground on that slightly before. I'm not sure. I'll double check before it's a uh, final party time there. I know I've mentioned this in the past, but before I put my crank in, I like this Goodson Mr. Race Oil stuff, engine, engine assembly gel. I made it, that's probably five or six engines worth so far that I've used up just doing seals and stuff like that. Anything you don't want to be dry. And it even says gear face prelude, wrist pins, journals, piston skirts, bushings, seals, lifter boards, bearings. I mean, in theory, you could put it on that bearing and drop the crank in, it just, it wouldn't give you the spin. I like to feel that spin. Uh, know everything's smooth and nice, but right now I'll put me a little dab on that seal. So we know she is not dry. When I put the crank in and everything will be happy. Coming in hot. There we are. Touchdown. 
previously, I did check the thrust in this without uh, the top cap on, and it was five and a half. So I know when my actual thrust bearing is completed, torqued down, it's gonna change. So I have to recheck the crankshaft in play. You can see that little bit, maybe, right now. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'm torqued down to 25 foot-pounds. I got my little dead blow. I'm gonna smack our crank that side, smack it on the nose, and set the thrust and I'm going to check it. I'm going to torque the top 10 bolts, then I will torque my side bolts. Notice, remember, I, this is cross-bolted main, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the sides, same time. There we are. Five tenths. Two and a half, relaxed. Go back the other way. One and a half, relaxed. I'm gonna say we're about three and a half to four. Three is the minimum, so I feel really good about this right now. I'm gonna get my other caps on and we'll see what it checks. I went ahead and got out my analog gauge because I know a lot of people out there don't like the digital gauge for some reason. So we're on zero right there. Everything is torqued. 110 on the caps, 45 on the sides. two and a half. We're at three. When this engine came in here, a lot of y'all will remember it had zero thrust. So I think we're doing better than that. Let me see if I can find that other ugly bear. This was the king that was in the number five cap, I believe. Let's see where that was rubbing there. I feel like it was up against the side of that crankshaft somehow. It was not clearance enough. That's why I went back with Clevites and they do have their own little coating on them but there seemed to be a little bit narrower bearing versus that. So pressing on, our crank's in and she spins nicely. So I've got to drop back and punt for just a minute. I got all the rings off these pistons. Um, and I guess maybe I had a brain fart. I don't know. Uh, a lot of these at least three or four were super duper rusty let me show you the stack how brown see that rust so the rings had rusted in the pistons themselves so i got to get those cleaned up but this one that second ring is stuck and i've sprayed some lube in there a couple times i'm gonna probably put it set it straight down in a pie pan or something tonight i'm trying not to take the pin out and the spiral locks out and gouge everything up in there. I hate having to do that. Uh, so if that dude will pop loose, then that will allow me to be able to clean out better. Uh, I gotta blow out all of our gas ports and such, but I gotta get some new rings ordered. So I will not be putting any pistons in this video. Like I said, pie pan for that guy. Uh, so I, I can't degree my cam uh, until I get my rings on. Can't put my new bearings in. And remember these are pinned which he, owner did remind me, they are pinned. So I've got X and D cleavites that have the little hole in them. So all that looks good for now. Uh, we can turn back around. So we wanted MLS gaskets and they do make, right now that is available from Mancini, a four 600 bore. But that is 70 thousandths more than we need. And we were kind of thinking it would be hanging pretty far out of, away from the bore. This is a four 500 bore Cometic and they are hanging in the uh, cylinder right now. So mostly on the bottom. So see here, we're happy. If we had that amount everywhere, it'd be fine. Then we start to hang in on 
these two bottom corner edges. Uh, the top actually barely clears. And I would be less scared of that top edge because where that raised rib there is, is actually where it's sealing. Uh, but there's no way we can run this gasket on here. So it looks like UPS truck just drove by. UPS came through. This is an 1105. If you want to see the specs, we are 51 thousandths thick, 4.590 gasket bore. And I think that looks pretty good all the way around. The bottom is the closest point, but we're safe. So that looks good. I will uh, get our head on, get our lifters in, and set up the push rod checker so we can see what length that we actually need. So as we set right now, I've got the new rings ordered from Total Seal. Um, our head gaskets are here. We are just waiting on rings and then we'll be able to go back together, I think. I appreciate y'all watching and following along with the build. I got a lot of exciting stuff coming up on the channel. So y'all be sure, like, share, and subscribe. That's what they say. people.